I think, therefore, I am. Uh, these famous words of René Descartes, the 17th century French philosopher, who also is often called uh, the first great modern philosopher, extremely influential thinker, uh, for a couple of reasons that I'd like to try to express here. It's hard, hard to talk about Descartes in a very short space because there are a number of significant uh, developments that come about with his way of looking at philosophy that are going to be foundational to much of modern philosophy. Uh, but let me try uh, to point out a couple of things about him. Uh, first of all, Descartes was very much enamored with the mathematical way of doing things. Uh, he was extremely impressed with the deductive powers of, uh, say, geometry, where you could take an idea, uh, you could take a, a small collection of principles and definitions and postulates, and then you could generate all of these seemingly uh, certain and indubitable or beyond doubt uh, conclusions that you could draw from them. Uh, so you could take mathematics and you could draw certain conclusions while other disciplines like history or theology or whatever, all of these other disciplines, you seem to have a lot of people fighting and arguing and disagreeing about them. So what Descartes tried to do was build a philosophical system uh, with the same type of methodology that would be used in the deductive methods of, of mathematics or, or in particular geometry. So uh, how did he do this? Well, first of all, in order to get started with a mathematical, uh, especially a geometrical problem, you've got to have some givens. There have to be some things that are beyond doubt. Uh, some of those are definitions, some of them are postulates, others are axioms, things that you, that you can't doubt uh, consistently. And so what Descartes tries to do is he looks around in the world and he goes through what he calls a rigorous process of doubting. Uh, he tries to see how much he can doubt and whether or not there's anything that can survive the process of doubt. Uh, so, for example, he doubts uh, whether the sensory world that we're experiencing right now is a real world. Uh, is it possible that the, the world that I'm experiencing right now is just a, a great big dream, uh, very similar to the dreams that I have at night, but I, I awaken from those dreams, uh, sometimes uh, sort of with a sense of astonishment that it seems so real, uh, the dream state seemed like it was uh, such a real uh, experience, but in fact it was all just in my head. Uh, could it be that this whole experience that we're having now is just a really, really complex and vivid dream? And Descartes concludes it's possible. It's quite possible that that's the experience I'm having. So then he goes to other things, like, for example, is it possible, if this world is just a dream, is it, is it possible that I could be certain of mathematical conclusions, like, for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4? Can I be sure of that? And he entertains the possibility that perhaps my brain states or my mental states right now are ones in which I am being deceived by some type of evil genius. Perhaps there's an evil genius that is poking at my brain or inserting thoughts into my mind and making me think that things are logically true when in fact they are not. So then he keeps pushing that until he gets to a principle uh, that he thinks is impossible to doubt. And that is the principle that we started with, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. And Descartes uh, thinks about uh, his own existence and the impossibility of denying it. Uh, so, for example, if I were to say, I don't exist, in the very making of that statement, I have to affirm my existence while I deny it. When I say, I think, therefore I am, I start the sentence with I. Implied in any denial of my own existence is an affirmation of my existence. And so Descartes comes to the conclusion that my own existence is the most certain of all things. Now the problem is for Descartes, how am I going to get back to the world outside of me? Because really, to be true to Descartes, what he's really interested in is science. He's interested in the physical sciences, the, the science of nature. Uh, he's doing this kind of philosophical thought in order to get back to science with a mathematical foundation. So what he does in, in the process is he starts by seeing what kind of metaphysical principles, that is, principles beyond physics itself, do I need in order to get started in the whole process of philosophy and then science later. Uh, and so what he comes up with is the existence of him, his own self, uh, which he takes to be through introspection. His own self is an immaterial thing. Uh, it's not a physical reality. It doesn't have the attributes of physical objects that he experiences through his senses. The mind is a different kind of reality. So what Descartes has is his mind, uh, which is a kind of spiritual thing, and then there are things that he seems to experience outside of him that seem to be physical things, a different kind of thing. This creates a gap. 
uh, between the spiritual or the mental world and the physical uh, uh, world outside of him, or the world of extended things, that is, things stretched out into space. So the question is, how is Descartes going to get reattached uh, to, these, to the outside reality? If he's gotten himself locked within himself by doubting everything outside of himself, how is he going to get reconnected? And the way that he does that is through the use of an argument for the existence of God. Uh, if he can discover the existence of God, and if he can establish, and notice I'm using a lot of ifs here, uh, but if he can discover the existence of God, and if he can determine that God is a truthful reality, a truthful being, then Descartes thinks that that will reconnect himself to the world outside of him, uh, that God would not deceive us uh, about a world that's, that is so certain in our sense experience. Uh, God would not deceive us about that uh, if, in fact, a truthful God exists. And he develops an argument that I don't have time to, to explore. It's the ontological argument for the existence of God. Uh, he finds that there's this notion of God in his mind that uh, existence is a necessary uh, component of the definition of this God, uh, unlike anything else I can think about. Uh, the existence of God is something that I can't separate from the reality of God or from the definition of God. And therefore, just like a triangle has three sides or in the interior angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees, uh, these are properties of triangles. These are attributes of, of triangles. Uh, so it is existence is an attribute, a necessary attribute of God, and therefore I can't think of the non-existence of God. Now, whatever you think of the argument, and I've certainly not done it justice here, uh, but whatever you think of the argument, uh, Descartes goes on to say that the existence of God also carries with it the uh, conclusion that God is truthful. And again, there's a whole line of reasoning that goes behind that, or goes with that. And with that, Descartes will reconnect uh, the human mind uh, to the world that exists outside of us, or the human eye or self with the world outside of us. Uh, again, uh, I don't uh, suspect that many of you are persuaded by that line of reasoning, for one, because of the brevity with which I presented it. But secondly, uh, there were an awful lot of people historically that weren't persuaded by it either. And so as you might imagine, modern philosophy is going to break out into a series of, it, of attempts uh, to try to establish philosophy on some certain ground. But I think the crucial point here is that all of these efforts uh, result from the failure, the rather ironic uh, failure of Descartes. Descartes begins his program by trying to establish a philosophical system that cannot be doubted, that was deductively certain, and that would give to us the certitude that, uh, that the geometrical sciences or mathematical sciences can give to us. But in fact, what he ended up producing was something that resulted in a variety of different philosophical positions, uh, I think in many ways leading to uh, some very profound forms of, of skepticism in the modern world. It's a fascinating case, and I think that there are many interesting things to explore with Descartes uh, and the failure of his approach. In fact, in my own mind, even the principle, I think, therefore I am, uh, it leaves something to be desired. Uh, to say that my own thinking about myself uh, is the most certain thing that I have as a human being, I think is simply false. Uh, I don't even have a sense of myself uh, without first having the experience of things other than me. Uh, we don't, the first word that human beings say is usually not I uh, with any understanding. It's usually things outside of us that we first know and then by a kind of reflexive knowledge we discover our own selves as the center of experience of the world that exists outside of our own selves. Uh, but Descartes wants to begin the whole process by reducing everything to the self, or at least certain knowledge that we have as human beings to our own selves, and then trying to seek a, seek a way to connect himself to the world outside of him. And I think uh, uh, the history of philosophy suggests that that program is impossible. Uh, that once you cut yourself off from the world outside of you, it is uh, impossible uh, to reconnect yourself with it, at least in a way that's convincing uh, to everyone else.